Hello and welcome back to the Stationary Dev. Today we have another pen review, an exciting one. This is a new pen to me. And so today we're gonna to be covering the Peniter La Grande Bellezza Rocco fountain pen. Um, I, just as a, a preceding story to this, I was weak in my no buy for the rest of the year goal. Um, I, I had a goal to not buy any more pens for the rest of the year at least, probably. Um, but I was weak on Black Friday. Um, but the good news for you is that it results in a new pen review. Uh, so this one got it in um, from Pen Chalet, and uh, I couldn't wait to, to ink it up. So uh, we're going to be covering the Peniter. Um, this is the packaging, so it comes in a black box black cardboard box you get a box within a box so inside this you get really cool packaging Peniter has some neat packaging so this is sort of the uh, Peniter writing box or writing desk box so it's a box that looks like or supposed to look like a writing desk um, it's pretty beautiful pretty beautiful unique box it's got magnetic closures here which you open up and it reveals your pen so it has Peniter there on the front you can't see but it's you know it's slanted like a desk at the top of your desk you got your pen so there's a preview of the pen and the rest of the box though you do get your usual sort of instructions um, information about the company about your pen model um, warranty information and the finish of the pin. So all of that is in these two pamphlets here. So put those back up, maybe. There we go. Good enough. And then also you get a little bonus present. So in the bottom here, let me try to get it out. You actually get some stationery. So you get some nice Peniter packaged stationary let's see you get one two three four five six six um different s sets so they're different colors and they come with a little uh note card like a little card um to write on as well as a matching envelope to send it with um and there is some sort of i don't know if you can tell probably not but there is some sort of like watermark um there it is can maybe just faintly see it but there is like a little impression watermark thing on the envelope so nice stationery I think that's really neat that they give you you know something to use your new pen on something to write with for with your new pen so that's pretty cool and then you have your like I said you're just your magnetic closures there so props to Peniter for the cool packaging as much as I don't really care about packaging it's still kind of a nice addition when uh, you get something to make your pen special. Um, so onto the pen. Uh, so this is, like I mentioned, this is my first Peniter fountain pen. I've never had anything from Peniter before. I don't have any of their inks or any of their other pens, but I've always been interested in them. So I've seen them at uh, pen shows and, and stuff like that and picked them up and, and been really interested in them. Uh, I also, I'm really interested in their Alchemist uh, series where they have, you know, really cool um, resin composed of, of cool materials um, but this is my first Peniter pen here uh, Peniter as far as it it, it goes is an old company uh, it was founded in 1774 in Florence Italy and still is in Florence Italy um, and but it's been revived kind of in recent years because Dante Del Vecchio um, of Visconti fame uh, moved over to Peniter a few years back and has been really pumping out some great looking pens. Um, the pen does come with a two year warranty too. So I forgot to mention that when I had the pamphlet out here, but it does come with a two year company from the uh, two year warranty from the company, which is a nice addition. So the pen, as you can see, is absolutely stunning out of the box. This thing is gorgeous and it's just a real showstopper out of the box. It's a beautiful pen. Um, the name La, La Grande Bellezza means the great beauty, and Rocco 
means rock. So uh, this is the La Grande Bellezza model, and then the finish is the rock finish. Um, it's a special resin. I think most of the, the finishes in this model um, are, are, are special resins to mimic celluloid. And I think it does a pretty good job at it. If you compare this pen to like a celluloid, like a jade celluloid or sapphire celluloid pen, I think it has the depth and, and does a really good job, the swirls and the depth and variation to do a pretty good job of that. Um, it is a piston fill pen and we'll get to that later. Uh, it has, as you can see, black trim to match the sort of darker colors of the resin. The Top of the pin has a penider finial, so it's a rounded top and comes to that penider finial there. Uh, you have the cap bend that just says penider, really nice. And on the back, made in Italy, of course. And it kind of, you know, swoops down to the barrel. And then nothing really on the back, just a black end cap there. Uh, you have the goose quill clip, which is something that penider, uh, promotes a lot. So you have the goose quill clip. It's supposed to mimic uh, sort of a goose quill or it look, look like it. It is a spring-loaded clip, so it's a very nice springy action there and uh, looks very functional. And it sort of harkens back. It's supposed to harken back to, you know, the pen's origin. So, you know, using goose quills, you know, what the Declaration of Independence was signed with and all of that, um, it's supposed to harken back to, to all those times. Um, it is made in Italy, if we covered, of course, and it, it does have some weight to it. So it is actually, it's a resin pen, but it, it has, you know, some metal parts and there's a piston in there. So it is actually a, a good, you know, weighted pen, a pretty hefty pen. Now, uncapping this thing, we have a magnetic cap. It is a magnet cap um, that, uh, you know, obviously works by way of magnets. They say in their literature that it makes the best possible seal for the pen. So you're not gonna, you're supposed to not have it dry out or, you know, it helps prevent burping of ink from temperature changes and stuff like that. Um, of course, you know, I'll see in time if that's true or not, but that's what they say. It does have polarized magnets, so there's only one orientation that this cap will go onto this pen, um, which is that right there, if you try to do it at a different angle, it'll sort of twist over. Um, that one it won't really go on, but it tw always will twist over to this orientation. Um, and it is a firm magnet, so it takes some force. It's not going to fall out in your pen or anything like that. I can give it a, a mighty shake and it's, it's going to stay on there. Um, uncapping it, though, we have this sort of curved, almost voluptuous sort of section. That's the word that came to my mind for some reason. And uh, feels pretty good in the hand as far as where they put uh, the indents and stuff. I'm kind of gripping it a couple fingers on the flat end there and then my other finger on the ink window. And it feels comfortable. I think I could write with this for a while, but we'll see once again in time. And then you've got this sort of stylized ink window that goes all the way around it, which is nice. You can see your, your ink level to a degree. Um, you And then, of course, we come to the nib, which is what everybody likes to see. This is a black coated stainless steel extra fine Peniter nib. So it's not a gold nib pen, um, but it is a stainless steel black coated nib. It has no breather hole, as you can probably see there. No breather hole. But it, um, you know, has some nice Peniter scroll work there, has the size displayed. When I was sort of testing this out just as a dry, you know, run over the paper, the nib does feel smooth in all directions. So there was no catching or scratchiness or anything like that. It feels good. Um, and then we have a probably plastic feed. I can't tell if it's plastic or ebonite, but um, I, I think it's a plastic feed, but it, it feels good quality. Um, and looks a good quality. So we'll see, of course, in writing. The, uh, like I mentioned, the weight is good, but especially holding it and at writing, the weight is very nice. So it is a piston fill pen, but there's a lot of weight here in this section. I think it's a metal um, section here. 
and there's plenty of weight to make it just balance perfectly. Like you, I wouldn't tell this is a piston fill pen just by holding it at writing address other than, you know, the ink window and stuff, but by weight and just blindfolded, wouldn't know it. Uh, so that's, that's a plus. And the piston, we'll get to the piston now, is very, very smooth and easy to turn. Like it takes very little pressure to turn the piston. Um, it, it almost is as good as a Pelican piston, in my opinion. It, it reminded me of a Pelican piston. So if you know what a Pelican piston feels like, this is, this is up there with that. All right, now time to get to the inking and the writing and test this thing out. So to do that, I'm going to ink it with this ink. Uh, this is KWZ Warsaw Dreaming. It's sort of like a black ink, but it's an interesting black. It's got like some purple and like dark blue kind of to it. Um, so it's an interesting ink. I've tried it in a couple different pens and had mixed results with it. So we'll see how it works uh, here in this paniter. It'll give it a good, a good test. It is a very wet and uh, dark ink, so that'll be fun. Let me get my paper towel napkin on standby because we could get messy with this one. Go ahead and uncap the pen. Let me open our KWZ. Get that lovely vanilla smell. You can kind of see the ink there on the outsides, how it's kind of purpley, dark blue there. But it is a black ink, I guess, technically. We are going to twist our piston down all the way. Once again, very easy and smooth to do. We'll see it. There it goes by the ink window. And then we're going to, hopefully you can see, I'm going to dunk it and suck it up into the pen. There we go. Sure looks like there's some ink in there. Wipe off any excess. It smells great. I always like the smell of KWZ ink. Some people don't like it, but I like it. It's a, it's a good smell for me. We're just going to wipe off this section here. Make sure to get down in that groove. And since it's a black ink and a black nib, I can't really tell if there's any ink on there. So we're going to roll with it. Put that uh, cap back on. And put the cap back on of this. Put that off to the side. Bring in our Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. And we'll give this thing a little bit of a writing test. And see if it holds its, holds its weight. So, just give it a little test here. All right, I think we're off to the races if we want to be. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit farther so maybe you can maybe adjust a little bit so you can see. All right, so we have our, I don't like that angle actually. And sorry, another adjustment. We have the, and this is a long one, the Fniter La Grande. The let's uh Rocco and the ink. Oh, it, it, I'll do the size, it is an extra fine steel nib pen. The ink that we have, as I mentioned, is KWZ. Warsaw Dreaming. Um, 
focus went wonky, but hopefully you can see that ink there. Just a black ink, but it does have, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but it does have some bluey, dark, dark blue sort of depth to it, which was their intention with the ink. And um, I guess we can do a smear test real quick, check on the wetness. Ooh, I think I do two usually. So it is writing drier right now, which I don't know if that's the pen or the ink, but you can see it's pretty dry, actually. But it is smooth so far. On to our writing test. So. Five boxing wizards jump quickly. Like I said, smooth so far, but it is a lot drier than I thought it might be, but that could just be this ink. Like I said, I've had mixed reviews on this ink here. Um, why I used it in a pen review for a pen I've never used before beats me. Um, so what do I think? The line size? is very uh, sort of standard extra fine I think it is I would say European fine or European extra fine so like a Japanese fine um, normal line width no uh, you know no flex or anything like that you know it's pretty much the exact same line if you use pressure or not it might just be a little uh, wetter there you can see there is some wetness give it a couple little squiggles there you go um smoothness like i said it's very smooth in all directions as i thought it might be from my little dry test no ink it is very very smooth and we'll see if the wetness comes through as the the you know the feed and stuff gets more saturated with time but it, it does feel it is drier but there is it's very smooth there's like no feedback other than just you know audibly you can hear you can hear the nib writing on the paper there um but yeah no flex regular line width smoothness is great wetness it runs on the dry side for me so far with this ink so i guess there we have it what is our conclusion so far with the paniter la grande bellezza rocco uh, so, I will mention price now. So, at, at Goulet Pins at this moment, this pin retails for 300 US dollars. A little over 300 US dollars, actually. I, on the other hand, got it on a deep, deep discount from Goulet, uh, not Goulet Pins, from Pin Chalet on a Black Friday sale, as I mentioned before. Um, so, I got this thing for almost half the, the price of the, re the retail price at Goulet, if that tells you anything. So for my price, this is an absolutely fantastic deal, a fantastic pen for that price. Not sure about the full price though. So especially when you consider you can get other Italian pens with fine steel nibs, um, like the Momento Zero you can get for $160. If you want to absolutely like try to match this pen, you can get a Momento Zero Grande 2.0 which is, you know, resin pen made in Italy with an ink window and a piston filler with a stainless steel nib for $230. Um, so is it the best deal full price? I'm not sure. That's up to you to decide. Uh, for me, I think I would go for a Memento Zero Grande uh, instead. But for my price and what I got this for and so far for me, this pen is absolutely stunning it's a stunning pen and i can't wait to really really use it and put it through the paces maybe try some different inks in it and and see uh you know what this thing is capable of so that is my review of the Pneider la grande bellezza rocco a pen that i shouldn't have got but i am glad i did get it uh <laughs> the uh, leave a comment if you have a Paniter pin or tried Paniter or if, if there's one on your wish list and, and let me know what it is, what you think about them. Um, 
Also, make sure if you enjoyed this video to leave a like or uh, subscribe. It's an easy, quick, free way to support the channel and also be updated uh, when I post new videos and content on this uh, channel. So until then, I will be riding with this thing and I will see you guys later.